doing a quarantine related favourites. Obviously we're all in lockdown at the moment um, so I wanted to include loads of favourites that you can either order online, download, watch, eat. Um, yeah so without further ado let's just get into it. Let's start with food and drink shall we. The drink that I have been really obsessed with lately is the Robinson's Fruit Creations uh, Peach and Raspberry Squash. Um, it just tastes really, really nice and um, tastes of peach and raspberry. I don't know what more I can say about that, but uh, it's one of those where I can water it down quite a lot and still enjoy the taste of it. So obviously you're making it go longer, which is good at these times. Um, but also you're not putting as much squash in um, compared to water. So that is my first favourite. Then my other food favourite is these. These are by the New York Bakery Company. They're the original bagels. Obviously there has been a slight shortage of bread. It's definitely got a lot better now. Um, but when there was a shortage of bread, I turned to bagels and I've really been enjoying them. Um, for breakfast I have had them with the Philadelphia Milka spread and then for lunch I've had them with the Philadelphia um, caramelised onion spread so those have been like my go-to like quick easy meals for like breakfast and lunch um, I've also been doing a ton of baking I did a cake I did some mini like fairy cakes Darren's just done some brownies I did uh, like um, cornflake clusters I did Rice Krispie treats, so we're definitely eating a lot of naughty foods at the moment and obviously Easter's gone and the the chocolate went on sale, so we're definitely not eating the best at the moment, but I think that is okay. And this time we're still getting out every day to walk, albeit not a very long walk because we've only got two small little dogs, um, but we're still trying to get out. I need to start getting back on the exercise. I was doing the Joe Wicks exercise, for about a week and a half I solidly did it and then I fell off the bandwagon and haven't got back on it so I need to do that um but yeah that's sort of like my foodie favorites let's move on to other stuff that I can like physically hold up and show you so games wise I got a Nintendo Switch it was a very impulse buy around the time that Animal Crossing New Horizons was coming out I was like I really want to get that and then once it's in my head like I obsess over it and I was watching all these videos on YouTube and I was like I really really want that and of course I really wanted the Animal Crossing special edition one which comes with the, the special colour consoles and on the back it's got um you can see it's sort of like embossed in and the the TV um console was Animal Crossing themed as well I ended up having to buy it off someone on eBay um, for a fairly comparable price to what it was going like on different online sites um, because just like online it was sold out everywhere um, even like just normal Nintendo switches were selling out you could only get the um, light and I really wanted the um, aspect of being able to put it in the console so me and Darren can play Mario Kart on it which is what we've also bought but Animal Crossing has definitely been my firm favourite um, I've just been totally obsessed with it and um, yeah I'm at the stage where I'm slightly like I want something else to happen I want to be able to now like um, change all the cliffs and do all the, the landscaping and stuff like that. I'm not quite there yet, I'm still expanding. Um, and I haven't bit the bullet to buy the Nintendo account where you can like then put in other people's codes and visit their islands because I know once I do that I'll be on it just like all the time. But um, I think at some point I might have to buy the bullet and do that. But um, yeah, I was surprised at how like massive the console is when I got it because I was so used to you know my small phone and even like this is way bigger than like a Nintendo DS used to be um, obviously I know that the, the colour bits come off but um, it's actually really nice and ergonomic to hold so um, I've been enjoying that then there is one uh, game on my phone that's been a very recent edition which has been uh, um, I've been doing and it's called I don't know if you can see it's called Go Knots 3D just there and basically it's like um it's sort of like a mental 
brain challenge game where you have to try and um, undo all the different ropes. Um, it's going to be hard to do backwards, but you like tap them. Some of them are locked so you can't move them or some they move two at once, that sort of thing. I'm not doing too bad considering I can't really see what I'm doing. And the, the task is to get them like all on the same hook as it were. So that is what I've been obsessing over. I'm on level 83. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy that. Oh, there's so many adverts in it as most games have these days. But those are the two sort of games that I've been enjoying. I have a couple of candle favourites to show you. Um, these are we burned sort of earlier on in quarantine. Now it's got a little bit warmer. We're not burning as many candles. But these are definitely three of my favourites. The first one... I don't think you're going to be able to find unless you're on like a Bath and Body Works reselling page, um, which I joined one and it's not going to be good when all this runs out. Um, but this is a um, one of the smaller ones in sugared, sugared snickerdoodle and it just smells really sweet and vanilla-y. It's got a little bit of like a, a spice element to it, but not really cinnamon because I'm not a fan of cinnamon. But it's just a nice warm scent. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the single wick candles. I don't think they throw as well as the three wicks. Um, just personal opinion. But because this is quite a strong scent, it does fill a room. So that's the first one. And then these two are my absolute favourite candles. And I have a couple more coming my way. Um, my parents are still stuck. Oh, I've just picked up the wrong one, actually. Damn. Well, we'll go with this one. Um, my parents are still stuck in Florida. They are yet to come home. Um, so I'm going to go with three candles, mainly because I picked up the wrong one. This, I do like this scent, but I don't think I'd repurchase this one necessarily again. I don't think it's that strong a scent. And it's peach sugar cone. I do like peach scents. It's very sweet, it's like vanilla -y scent to it um, with that like really crisp peach but it's not one of the stronger peach scents that I've had, so um, I wasn't supposed to pick that one up, but I have I have burned it nonetheless. It is a nice scent, I just don't think the throws is good. What I was supposed to pick up was strawberry pound cake, which I have been loving. Um, and that is the one that I've got my parents to pick me up before all the shop shut. Um, it's super, super good, really nice and sweet. It has a really good throw to it and definitely one of my top favourite Bath & Body Works candles as well as this one, which is Banana Bunt Cake. Oh, it's just such a warm, like, banana scent. Um, it has a toasted walnut element, so it does just smell sort of like banana bread or like a bakery or, you know, that, like, overwhelming scent you get when you go into, like, a candle shop or, like, Hallmark the card shop it sort of smells like that a little bit but it's when you burn it the banana really comes through and me and Darren have been loving that scent so sticking with Buff and Body Works things I have a fragrance and that is confetti cake pop um, I've been alternating my fragrances quite a lot just because I'm at home um, but this one is one of my favorites it just smells really sugary and vanilla-y. Um, I do wish they had sort of bought out this in a candle. I think that would have been really cool, but they didn't. But um, yeah, I like the design of this collection as well. I think it's really cute. But yeah, just a really nice light scent that I can put on and um, it makes you want to eat food. <laughs> So I then have a pillow mist. This is the reset one. Um, it's the Mediterranean Bergamot Neroli and Cedarwood one. And it comes in this little pink packaging. This smells so good. We spritz it on our pillows every now and again. It just smells like a spa. It reminds me of like being on our, our Disney cruise and our Disney trip because we got it then. And it just like, it does just smell really relaxing to me. And just, it's one of those where it instantly transports you into a different place. I really like it. I think it's a really nice relaxing like spa-esque scent so that's been our little pillow mist i sort of want to just like use this as a fragrance to be honest um and then i have two hand creams so obviously we've been using a lot of antibacterial and a lot of hand wash luckily we stocked up on antibacterial when we were there in end of february start of march um 
and I also had the hindsight of getting some hand creams which is good um, or the foresight shall we say um, so I have two hand creams but I also want to mention we have a hand wash that I've really been enjoying I'll insert a clip because I forgot to bring it up but it is the banana one that they've currently got super super nice the foamy hand washes are really nice they make you want to like stand there for ages and wash your hands which like you're supposed to do but it like the scent just lingers and it smells really good and like I said we love anything banana scent that being said this hand cream is a banana custard this is the one that I've used the most and because my hands have just been getting really dry I wouldn't necessarily it says it smells like banana custard I'd smell it says like straight up sun cream like that banana with a little bit of vanilla to it I think it smells really good but I wouldn't say it's like a banana custard like cupcake type thing and then again strawberry pound cake because that is my favorite and again it's just really nice and sweet strawberry really smells good enough to eat so those are my little bath and body works items i have two books uh so i have been reading quite a lot and i've not really updated you for a while on the books that i've read um I've just been sort of doing it here and there really but I am currently filming a um like quarantine book readathon so that will be coming up but just my two standouts Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire I really enjoyed I did read um Prisoner of Azkaban and then obviously moved on to this I really enjoyed it um I didn't think I would as much as I did because I think a lot of people don't like Goblet of Fire and I don't know if that's from the book or they just don't like the film in general but I much preferred the book to the film just based on how much more they can fit into a book um and I like the Triwizard Tournament and I like the Yule Ball and the the different um relationships that the characters had in this book and uh yeah it helped me to understand the film a bit more I'd say um and really get my mind into that world again so soon I will probably pick up the fifth one I'm gonna be sad not gonna lie when these come to an end but then I know I've also got like the fantastic beasts to read and the cursed child but nothing's like quite the same as like the original Harry Potter so I read that obviously gave it five stars the one that I've just finished and that I have done on my um readathon is Hope and Other Punchlines by Julie Buxbaum I'm not quite sure how you say her name um I really enjoy this book I'm not going to go into it too much because obviously I would talk about it a lot in that video but just to give you the premise of the book it is about a girl called Abby who was uh one of the infamous faces of 9-11 it is a fictional story but as we know there are like very iconic images from that time and uh, this is sort of is what it creates um so as a uh, she was as a baby she was being carried out with the twin towers falling in the back um holding a balloon because it was her birthday and um ever since she has been called baby hope and this picture has been infamous with um hope and optimism for the future and she's had to grow up with everyone knowing that she's baby hope and knowing about her and then one summer this summer she decides she wants to go to a camp and um, become a counsellor and um, just sort of forget about the baby hope thing um, she is starting to come down with a cough which she is pretty sure is related to 9-11 a lot of people got ill from all the, the chemicals and the fumes that were inhaled at the time um, and she does meet a boy but the boy has the link of he wants to know what happened to his dad he thinks his dad disappeared when he was younger but he thinks he is one of the guy the men that is in the back of the baby hope photo so that's where that link intertwines i read this book really quickly i gave it five stars i thought it was really beautifully written um really well done and um it was like nothing that i've read before so i enjoyed that okay so i think that's everything that i've got to show you physically now we're gonna go on to like media and things like that so do 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 or oh, one other thing that's not media pin trading i've really been getting back into pin trading um i've just recorded a pin trading haul which will be up soon um and i have set up a new instagram pin trading page uh, so um i will leave that link down below if i can remember so go and follow me on there and uh we can talk all things pins over there but i've really been enjoying getting back into it it's not been great for my wallet i must say 
but it's been nice to get back into that pin trading element and it really kicked off when we went back on holiday to Florida and I got back into the pin trading game and like that buzz that it gives you. Okay, to watch. On TV, we've got Quiz, which is the uh, Scandal Who Wants to Be a Millionaire uh, docuseries. Um, if you're in the UK, you're probably well aware that it's been on ITV, um, but it basically follows this couple who supposedly cheated at Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and won um, a million pounds. Uh, so that has been what we sort of like binge watched that. Um, in like one night really um so there's that one the other tv show which we absolutely love is the return of friday night dinner if you have not watched it you need to it is the perfect thing to get you laughing at this time like we look forward to it every week i just absolutely love it it is the only show aside from i love lucy when i watched it like first time round it's like the only show that will literally make me cry with laughter like so hilarious so would recommend that on channel 4 we did end up uh, getting Disney Plus so we've been watching a lot on there um, we've been watching just some of our top ones obviously the Imagineering which everyone talks about um, we started to watch the wedding series last night which was lovely um, what else I've been binge watching Sweet Life of Zack and Cody again I know my best friend has been like binge watching all of the old Disney Channel shows uh, so I'm currently watching that and well we've been watching the um I can't quite remember what it's called but it's where they train up puppies to be guide dogs we've been watching that series um I watched Snow White for the first time since I was a child and it was really lovely to watch it and nostalgic in a way because um my nan was a massive Disney fan in fact um this little ornament was hers um, and she was a massive Disney fan. We would always watch Disney uh, films when I'd go and stay at hers for like the weekend if my parents were going away somewhere and it was like our thing that we watched together and Snow White was one of her favourite uh, princesses. She had a Snow White ornament. I believe I think my cousin has that ornament now um, and it was really nice to go back and watch it and the nostalgic element to it and see it now as like an adult's point of view and I want to slowly start watching some of the um the classic films again I think that would be nice I've also been watching a lot of the old uh, Mickey Mouse shorts um so everything from like Steamboat Willie um up until the current ones really um but mainly the the older ones they have a whole section of all the old ones from the 20s the 30s the 40s and it's really nice to sort of see where it all started um with Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse um and obviously I knew about Oswald the Rabbit but I didn't realize that Disney created Oswald for Universal and then when he left Universal he had to leave behind Oswald and that's when he ended up going to create Mickey Mouse there's your fun fact for you um what else we watched Jaws Revenge the other night that was pretty cool I like any of the Jaws films to be honest um Netflix obviously we've been watching Tiger King um I mean everyone's watched it but we really enjoyed it um obviously it is slightly controversial um but it's entertaining and what else have we got to do mean stuck in and the other one I really enjoyed watching on Netflix was the program cheer which is all about cheerleaders and um, their like strive to get the trophy at the national finals and it's definitely worth a watch it is sad because this year they've had to cancel their um, they, they didn't end up going to the finals because obviously quarantine we all went into lockdown so yeah but i think that is all my favorites a lot of food favorites a lot of tv favorites um yeah like i said i want to try and get back into reading a bit more so i'm doing the readathon at the moment um so yeah let me know down below if you've got any sort of tv film recommendations that you would suggest and uh, anything else that is like keeping you sane through this quarantine time and um i'll see you in the next video bye guys <laughs>